Hi Facebook, Carl here and uh, in this little video I want to kind of talk about the top five mistakes that I find when uh, people start down this road of having a Google review portfolio. And I kind of think of it like a portfolio like you would have like your testimonials and client stories, you know, all in this great place. But the wonderful thing about having it on Google is that they will use all the keywords that the people write in your testimonials uh, that will give you that SEO benefit. So here are the, the top five mistakes that I find uh, people doing. Is Number one is they don't often have a regular rhythm or routine. So it's sort of a, a thing that kind of happens here or there. Uh, it's not a daily, weekly discussion. So in a perfect world, you would have your morning huddle in the morning, uh, and then maybe even on a Friday, you'd have like a retrospective. So something where you look back on the week and say, how do we do? Was it good? Uh, did we ask everybody? Did we miss anybody? Did we ask when they came in to buy our core product? Or did we come in just when, uh, you know, asking for it when they, they came in for anything? So the number one is make sure that you've got a regular rhythm and that it becomes part of the conversation. So it's, it's part of the water that you swim in. Uh, the second mistake that I see is they don't have a remarkable client experience. Remember, we're asking, you think about the word remarkable, it has the word remark. And what that ultimately means is you're wanting people to remark on the experience that they're having with you. So if your experience with them is kind of like meh, then they're not going to do it. Okay. So by the way, if you're watching this live, I'd love it if you could type hashtag live. And if you're watching it on replay, type hashtag replay. So having a remarkable experience is great. Now you don't need to have like a, like a $10,000 budget to do this. Sometimes it's just the little things. It's the personalizing. It's the fact that you've taken the thought and the effort behind the clients to make sure that they feel welcomed and really special. It's that kind of just going above and beyond, but I often talk about it in terms of like a surprise and delight. And, and the true essence of that is you want to surprise and delight your clients at the same time. If you just surprise them, it's not great. And if you just delight them, but they knew it was coming, then that's also not great. So make sure that you surprise and you delight in a remarkable client's experience. The third one is not having a system for collecting Google reviews and following them up. So, you know, how are you doing it? Is it clunky or is it, or is it just something that happens like a well-oiled machine? You know, like when I first learned to drive, I was lucky enough to do it in a uh, manual car and, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, it was all the mirrors and, the, and the, the indicators and all that sort of stuff. And then soon enough, it actually just became part of the, uh, the normal thing that you did. So uh, from there, you want to make sure that you have a system. So it just becomes one thing that you just bolt on to whatever it is that you're doing. The fourth one is paying someone to do the Google reviews for you. Now, this is a really big no-no. It really violates Google's terms and conditions, uh, and it most likely will get your account shut down. So definitely do not pay people to do it, especially if they're outsourced in other third you know, developing countries, that's definitely a no-go. Uh, make sure that someone within your business, Google knows, uh, they've got location signals, they know if it's coming from within Brisbane, if that's where you live, that's where I am, uh, or if it's coming from, you know, Bangladesh or somewhere overseas. Uh, the fifth one is sending like really super long emails, uh, asking for a Google review. People are really time poor today, so they really wanna make sure that uh, if you're gonna ask a request, you're gonna make an unreasonable request to a client, you keep it short and snappy. Okay, so the five mistakes that clients are making was not setting up a rhythm to uh, to not only acknowledge, celebrate, and, and talk about your reviews, uh, not having a remarkable experience. Number three was not having a system for collecting and following up your reviews. Number four was paying somebody to do the reviews for you. And number five was sending like long emails asking for the review. So I'd love for you to pop in the chat below, you know, it's okay, there's no judgment here. If, if you've been guilty of one of those five, I'd love it if you'd share it with me or uh, you know, what is it you're taking out of those five points to actually do something a bit differently uh, moving forward and set yourself a target. So I wrote a blog about this. I'll put the blog link uh, down there in the email as well. So if you wanna read the extended blog, uh, where I also share you know, some of the tips and, uh, and uh, strategies that you can do to help you build your Google review portfolio. The benchmark is really to get to a hundred reviews as the first step, and then from a hundred you want to go up to two hundred and so forth. You know, we're almost just about to crack the seven hundred mark, uh, and I'm already planning what do we need to do to get to the the eight hundred, nine hundred, and even thousand dollar, a thousand uh, Google review mark. 
All right, guys, that's it from me today. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and uh, I'm going to start doing a lot more of these as I write the blogs and, uh, and sort of value add with some new content that way. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye for now.